My, male 32, sister-in-law 18, is living with my wife 27 and me while she attends university. She has a partial scholarship and we let her live here so her family can save money. My wife was injured severely in a fall while hiking two years ago. Unfortunately, she's lost the use of her limbs. I love my wife very much and I will never divorce her. We have two very young kids that need us both. Also, my work provides us with medical insurance, which is very important. The crux of the matter comes down to intimacy. There are medical reasons. About one year after her accident, my wife was feeling very down. She was in a very dark place. She thought I would leave her and be with someone else. I didn't have anyone else on the side. I also had no time. I was working, taking care of two kids and assisting in her care. I literally had no time for anything like that. Anyway, it led to a fight that led me to admitting that I still had physical needs. Before you ask, yes, we are both in therapy. This has been a situation that neither of us imagined when we met. Long story short, my wife finds me women that I sleep with and have zero emotional attachment to. I don't go looking for women and I don't tell my wife what to do. When she wants, she makes the arrangements. It's not perfect and it's not what I want. I want my wife to be healthy again. However, it was a private decision that we made together. My sister-in-law moved in with us in September to start university. She helps out around the house and with the kids. In return, she lives in our basement suite and I give her some spending money. She doesn't work any hours a day or anything. She might watch the kids while I make dinner or she'll work in my wife's garden. One of the nights that I was going out as arranged, my sister-in-law was supposed to watch the kids. Instead, she got one of her friends to watch them and she followed me. She saw me meet a woman and go up to a hotel room. She took pictures. Rather than talk to her sister about it, she decided to wait until the family gathering when we had the family over to confront me with the evidence in front of everyone. I was angry. My wife was furious and embarrassed. My in-laws were getting ready to kick my butt until my wife spoke up and explained everything. Nobody is okay with it, but it isn't what they thought. But now everyone knows something private about us that we didn't want to be publicized. I talked to my wife about it. Her sister is no longer welcome to live with us. She has to commute from her parents' home, which is almost two hours each way. Tough crap. She could have talked to us. She could have confronted me. She could have talked to her sister. Instead, she chose to be a hero and tell everyone something that was never meant to be public. She's begging us to come back. She now has no social life because she's traveling three and a half to four hours a day. Her parents offer to rent the basement, but we don't want her here. Am I the idiot for kicking my sister-in-law out? Honest question, but what exactly did she think she would gain by publicly outing OP? At best, assuming wife was in the dark, she would have destroyed wife's marriage, crushed her self-esteem, ruined things for the kids, and done so publicly. There's no coming back from that. No matter how you look at it, the worst possible choice was the one she made. OP, you're not the idiot. She decided to put her own ego above thinking for even a single second, and this is the consequence. It sucks, but maybe she should have just talked to her sister instead of broadcasting it as a first step. Exactly, and in no scenario would the sister have somewhere to stay afterward. It's not like the sister would be allowed to live there while OP and his wife are going through divorce. She nuked her relationship with her sister, her cushy living, free living accommodations where they paid her for her help, for five minutes of spectacle that would have ruined family gatherings for her sister and nibblings for years to come. Main character syndrome, I suspect. Clearly, this chick thought it was going to be a lifetime movie where they kick the husband out and everyone hugs her afterward. I mean, I don't want to sound like an idiot, but if the husband is basically working, covering everything, raising the kids, and helping a paraplegic spouse, he'd have to do some heinous crap for me to rat him out. The dude is a complete hero. And no crap, intimacy is going to be awkward. Sister's idea of success would be to destroy her sister's entire life, no insurance, no support, etc. OP is not going far enough. The sister-in-law wanted to ruin his wife's entire life for five minutes of attention. So my daughter Lily, a teen, approached her mom about getting some new clothes because her old ones were, according to her, seriously outdated. Without even giving me a heads up, my wife decided to let Lily take the reins and pick out the clothes herself from some websites online. Fast forward to me unexpectedly coming across Lily in a crop top and short shorts. I asked her if she was planning to go out like that, to which she casually responded with a confident, yes. I told her she needed to change into something more appropriate and asked who bought the clothes for her. It turned out it was my wife. I confronted my wife about it, told her I wasn't comfortable with our daughter's clothes and suggested we return them. 
We ended up having a bit of an argument with my wife saying our daughter is old enough to make her own clothing choices, that there was nothing wrong with the clothes our daughter was wearing and that I was being too overprotective. After a long discussion, my wife reluctantly agreed to return the clothes, but on the condition that I tell Lily it was entirely my decision. Now my daughter knows and she's not thrilled about it. She argued that the clothes are trendy, a common style among her friends, and that I'm the only person who thinks wearing a crop top is inappropriate. But I'm standing my ground, saying that regardless of trends, I won't allow that type of clothing to be worn, not in public at least. My daughter is giving me the cold shoulder and avoiding interaction with me now. I do feel a little guilty, and I think I might have been a bit too firm and reactionary, but at the same time, I just didn't want to sacrifice my principles. Does that make me the idiot? You are the idiot. This entire story is just one giant cringe. Why does your wife need to consult you before shopping for your daughter? What is your problem with a crop top? Wait, let me guess. You believe the men have no control over their actions, and if a woman shows skin and gets hurt, it's her fault. As the idea that we should be teaching our sons to be respectful of women instead of teaching our daughters to hide their bodies ever occurred to you? Heck, why not get her a burqa while you're at it? Dude, you need one serious reality check, and you owe your wife and your daughter an unreserved apology. Controlling parents like you often end up having little or no contact with their kids. It would be one thing to have a conversation about appropriate times and places for clothing, e.g. if you go to a conservative church or a nice restaurant, that might not be the right time and place for that kind of clothing, and she might not be allowed in. But wholesale, taking away her clothes is controlling and not appropriate. It's her body, she gets to decide what she wears within legal limits. LMAO, yes. OP, you should keep up your current attitude and behaviour if your goal is for your daughter to seldom or never call or visit and spend as little time with you as possible as soon as she can get away, which is only a few years away. Good job, Dad. And I bet OP's sons are not held to nearly the same standard as his daughter regarding what they're allowed to wear either. My wife gave birth about one year ago and she changed. She was angry all the time, suspicious and paranoid of everyone. I think her mother filled her head against me. She would constantly accuse me of cheating and mother-in-law and she would talk badly about me on the phone when I wasn't home. One day she said she was leaving me and her mother was packing her stuff. She left with our daughter to go to her mother's house. Later that night she called me and told me that she kissed a guy and asked me how it felt to be cheated on. She was accusing me again of being a cheater and how I betrayed her. I finally had enough and told her not to come back. Then she started blowing up my phone and I refused to answer or take her calls. She did show up at our house after two days and asked me for help with her mental state. I took her to the hospital and she was diagnosed with PPD and was put on medication. She slowly started returning to her normal self. I think she's healed and can manage by herself from now on, so it was the right time for me to divorce her. So I'd served her divorce papers a few days ago. She isn't happy about it and is begging me not to divorce her. She's blaming it on the PPD and I understand that her head was messed up, but I don't tolerate cheating, so I'm proceeding with divorce. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. PPD is not a get-out-of-jail-free card. I fully understand the hormonal paranoia and such. I was on a hormonal medication for a few months and it made me insanely paranoid that my partner was cheating on me, but acting on it is a completely different thing. I also had paranoia from PPD. It's awful. My husband couldn't do anything right. He could barely go to work without me freaking out. It's still not an excuse. When my partner went to work, I was beside myself. I was a million percent convinced there was another love interest there, and I spent the entire day crying and making up all these scenarios in my head, and the moment my partner walked through the door, I'd fight with them over this imaginary partner. I'm not proud of the person I was on the meds. The symptoms you're describing, paranoia and delusions, do not fit with postpartum depression. They sound more like postpartum psychosis. This is very different and very serious. It can cause paranoia, delusions and hallucinations. OP, are you sure your interpretation of the diagnosis is correct? It's hard to judge this if nobody knows what's going on. It's a messy situation. But I hope you don't end the marriage over a kiss that may or may not have happened while your wife was mentally ill from a child that you created with her. Everyone is insane here. This woman was having a severe mental health crisis and he did absolutely nothing to get her help. 
and is now crying like a little witch over her kissing someone. What a complete and absolute idiot. OP, at least be honest. You don't want to be married to her anymore, but over a kiss when this person was suffering a horrific episode is just ridiculous. My husband and I have been together for six years, and combined we have four kids. My two stepkids are tweens, my bio kids are a tween and an infant, obviously the youngest is our together baby. Now, since I gave birth I've had a tough time eating. I can be super hungry, but more often than not if I actually think about eating, I feel super nauseated or just grossed out and can't bring myself to eat actual meals. Stuff like crackers or finger foods are fine, but big meals just sicken me, the thought of eating it anyway. So since I had our daughter I've eaten a total of maybe five hot meals. Yes, I've been in full contact with doctors who monitor me. We're trying to come up with a game plan. But anyway, given this, I hardly ever eat dinner. I usually cook it, place it out for my husband and kids, and then leave my plate empty because I can't stomach it. But here's where I could be wrong. My husband knows I have a very hard time eating. Most days he tries force-feeding me, honestly. But yesterday I texted him saying, Making shepherd's pie tonight, I can't wait. I didn't say I would eat, so maybe that's where I went wrong. But on the other hand, I never text him with a drooling emoji after saying I'm making something, so maybe he should have picked up on that. I don't know. I was starving anyway, and I was looking forward to having dinner. So I get done cooking and call everyone to the table as I usually do, and next thing I know, my mother-in-law is walking through the door saying, hope I'm not late, and then sits down, in my seat, and grabs the extra plate meant for me. I was shell-shocked, because, like, I just stood there. I didn't even know what to say. My mother-in-law just started digging into the dish even before my kids were served, which made me angry. I also don't like saying out-of-pocket things in front of my kids either, so I just told them to dig in and started walking off. My stepson, tween, whispered, But Dad, I think Mom was going to eat tonight. And my husband said, Babe, were you going to eat tonight? You can take my helping. And I just ignored him because, like, I was so mad that I couldn't say anything at that moment. I needed to cool off. With a smile, I told my stepson, it's fine, and went to the other room. After mother-in-law left, my husband came out, asked me what that was about, and said, You could have taken my meal, babe, it's not a big deal. I kind of snapped and said he never should have even invited his mom over to eat without asking me, without knowing if I was hungry or not. I brought up that I texted him a drooling emoji indicating that I was hungry or excited for the meal. He just said, Yeah, but you never eat. Now I feel like a damn loser, thanks, and walked off. My stepson unfortunately heard this and he came out with his plate and handed it to me and said, I stole some more before it was eaten so you could have some mum. Literally the sweetest damn kid ever, I swear. But now I feel like an idiot because I truly do never eat hot meals, so it was safe for my husband to assume last night would be no different and the fact that my stepson felt he needed to do something about it as well. Am I the idiot? My husband is still sulking over this. Edit, I only made enough for the people who were supposed to be there, myself included. I always make myself a portion, even though I never know how I'm going to feel about eating. But every night I only make enough for us. My husband knows this because there are never any leftovers. The portion my stepson brought me was maybe half a scoop. As for mother-in-law, she always does stuff like that. In her eyes, adults come first, hence why she grabbed food before kids had been served, because the adults worked all day. My husband doesn't hold the same view but never speaks up to her when she does it. My mother-in-law and I don't get along and never have, so she probably wouldn't have cared if she knew I wanted to eat. We don't speak usually. Also, her taking my seat meant there was nowhere else to sit. I had no other option than to leave the room because despite my husband offering me his serving, he stayed seated and was dishing out his place without looking at me while he was offering it. I know him well enough to know that means he was hungry and was banking on eating regardless of having offered up his plate. Not the idiot. If a tween sees it, your husband should too. Your mother-in-law taking so much food when three children needed to eat from it is disrespectful. But your husband inviting someone over without telling or asking you while you're the one making dinner is the problem here. OP, tell your husband to take lessons from his son or get his stuff together. Your husband needs to step up. Your husband feels like a loser because he acted like one. Who invites their mother over to eat their wife's cooking without asking first? I mean, really? I get we men can be clueless, but damn, that brings clueless to a new level. Like caveman clueless. I wish I could introduce your husband to my wife. By comparison, I look civilized. Right? 
Why would he even assume she was cooking enough for his mother? And for mother-in-law to just walk in, grab a plate and go to town? That's pretty rude too. That woman has no cooth whatsoever. She needs to get in her lane and stay there. How would she have felt if her mother-in-law had come in and pulled that crap on her postpartum butt? She would have gone thermonuclear. And now he's trying to manipulate you into thinking it's your fault. What the heck? Um, yes, it is your fault and I'm blaming you. LOL. He might have been a bit coddled as a kid. How could anyone not comprehend that that scenario is 100% their fault? I hope your hubby has had his come-to-Jesus moment and it changed him for the better.